Okay, so without any further delay, uh, my name is Vladimir Vesely and I'm coming from this university. And what we are doing over here for a long time is that we are trying to do something called automated network simulation and analysis. Uh, we are doing it for eight years and I will be speaking about it after uh, my presentation during the panel introducing new frameworks. But I must admit that uh, for eight years that this project is running, we are still not reaching the basic goal of this project. So because we are still preparing all the tools that are necessary in order to perform this kind of the simulation. But I'm sorry, it's not very nice resolution. Let me this way. It's a weirder a little bit. Okay, I will deal with it after the presentation. Uh, so, uh, what we are doing is that we are creating a new simulation modules for different wired routing protocols. We are interested in wired networks because what we are doing over here is basically uh, teaching other students about Cisco related networking stuff, which is heavily involved in traditional, I would say, routing and switching. So during the last two or three years, we've been able to come up with the EIGRP routing protocol. And as the next step, we've decided that we would like to try also the similar protocol, which is Babel, which is based on a lot of, let's say, features and a lot of ideas that were initially uh, introduced by EIGRP. By the way, who knows at least one of these protocols? Who heard about it? A few hands over here, perfect. So, uh, for at least some brief introduction, what you can expect from the Bible routing protocol. It is multi-address family protocol. This means that it can carry IP version 4 and also IP version 6 routing information. No matter whether you are using IP version 4 to carry this information or IP version 6. In this way, it is very similar, to, for instance, to ISIS protocol or, for, or to the newest OSPF version 3 that is capable of this multi-address family. It is a hybrid distance vector. So comparing to OSPF, it doesn't have the knowledge about wall topology. It's only a distance vector. So based on the metric, I can decide whether I'm creating a routing loop or not. It is kind of the open source alternative that was invented and uh, heavily implemented by a guy called Julius Krobocek from uh, University Paris Diderot. And he was that good in, let's say, pushing it this thing in IETF that it is now standardized as RFC 6126. Uh, and currently there exist three implementations, but I would say the only one, the first one from the, out, uh, from the original author is the one that is used uh, mostly. Uh, when we were using at the state or looking at the state of the art of this protocol, we are also checking other simulators where they have this kind of the protocol or if they offer at least other <laughs> distance vector protocols. And uh, not even in NS2, NS3 or even in OpNet, where the support for routing protocols is kind of limited. In NS2 and 3, I believe that they have EIGRP, but it is definitely EIGRP that is trimmed in uh, functionality. So, a mm, little bit more about Babel. It is using, just as EIGRP, something called feasibility condition to decide whether if you are performing a routing, you are taking multiple routing information from your neighbor, that you are not creating a routing loop. It is using the same idea as uh, EIGRP. So we have a router and we have this kind of a network and we are measuring a metric through multiple next hop. We are Measuring, let's say for here, it will be in a metric of 3 plus 5 plus 5, that will be 13. Over here, it will be 15. Decide based on this metric, we are, uh, and based on this metric, and based on information provided our neighbors, because also our neighbor is telling us what is the distance of our neighbor through the, uh, from the destination network, we are able to decide whether something that our neighbor is telling and something what we've computed is not creating a routing loop. Metric in uh, uh, Babel is just as in any, any other protocol. Uh, usually lower or all the time. Lower means better and metric is basically the sum of all metrics along the way. 
what is nice about Bible is that it can it has a programmable link calculation. What does it mean? That these numbers, let's say the enumeration of the edges, the links between routers, can uh, use different rules how these numbers are computed and then used in the metric. So Bubble has a programmable metric calculation that is suited for wired protocols and also for wireless protocols. We've implemented both of them. Uh, more, uh, little bit more about details, Bubble is running above IP version for multicast address 224.0.0.111 and also I, it supports IP version 6, so FF02 semicolon 1, semicolon 6. It is operated above UDP, transport protocol, on port 6696. It is not using messages, it is using TLVs, which is much more generic in a way that if you need to update a protocol, you don't need to create a new version. Just take into the account OSPF2 and OSPF3, they are basically incompatible in a way of messages. In case of EIGRP or BGP or Bubble, Instead of creating a new version, you just create a new TLV, which is much more easier to adopt and put into the protocol itself. Uh, as any other routing protocol, it is using a discovery, automatic discovery of the neighbors using the hello TLV. It is able to ask for routing, routing updates using uh, route request, and basically it would be probably too much to go too deep. If I have only seven minutes. So, how we've implemented? Uh, what we are having is something that we are calling ANSA router, which is uh, uh, which is a simulation module based on the original INET router that we are extending to other new simulation modules that we've produced, like boxes over here and here. We will be interested in Bubble, and we've implemented it containing basically three modules. The one which is called Bubble Main contains all the features and the pluggable policies are over here and they can uh, alter the link calculation. Uh, as a validation process, we've compared like what we are seeing in our simulator and uh, in what our simulation modules are doing and what we can uh, intercept in a real network where the bubble is employed using this Bubble D uh, Bubble D implementation. So basically we are comparing the simulation results with the referential implementation. We've done uh, basically three runs when we've tried to uh, see whether things match between the real and simulated behavior. So we've uh, inspected establishing of neighborship, how the routing table is converging during the time and how the routing protocol is operating under the link failure. Using this scenario where we have four routers and four networks that are basically uh, substituted by standard hosts in INET. Uh, and we've been able to, um, let's say, record and see the Babel message exchange. So over here are few tables. Basically what you can see from the tables are, I would say, reasonable differences between a simulation run, simulated run and the real network using Wireshark packet traces. Uh, there are slight differences in a way how, what is the order of TLVs in the messages because uh, the bubble implementation uses some optimization, that, so uses some optimization, but still the outcome of the behavior of simulation and uh, simulated and uh, our simulation modules is same. And yeah more tables, more things, so at least I will, instead of it, I will just show you. So. Okay, terribly small. Maybe I will do it this way. So over here we have our simulated network. We are using some, uh, yeah. 
if I will just focus on one rotor and what is happening inside the rotor, we can see here this ANSA rotor, which contains only the bubble simulation module. Inside is exactly what I've described in uh, the paper and at you, just three modules, and we will be interested what is happening over here. So a lot of state is maintained by this simulation module. We will be interested in this part, which is the number of neighbors, and this part, which are routes that are, uh, uh, let's say, that are exchanged through the bubble routing protocol. And one more thing, we will observe what is also happening in the routing table. Gosh. And we'll be interested in IP version 6 routing table. So, so far, there are just six routes, which are basically routes that are directly connected to the network. If I will just fast forward a little bit to 0 0.2 seconds, we will see that network exchange uh, messages uh, to uh, important for the neighbor discovery. So <coughs> right now our router knows about two other Bible routers. And if I will fast forward even more, let's say to the time t equals 10, we will see that routing table is populated with a new records about existing uh, networks in our topology. And for instance, if I will follow what is the route to network 2001db8 semicolon d, I will see that my neighbor is router R2. So from this perspective, from router R1, am I going to this network, I'm going through router R2. And the last thing for demonstration, we will also, I will also show you what happened during the link failure. Voila, so at the time T20, the link between R1 and R2 goes down and we can see that the next hop has changed to router R3 which is like over here. So yeah, basically it is doing routing, so that's it. So this is our kind of the code contribution uh, extending the INET original framework behavior. That would be it for this paper, and I think I'm right on time. You caught up, you caught up almost all yeah. the time. So you used a part of your time when you were just yeah. making money. <laughs> so thank the speaker, and I have time for a few questions. more like what you are interested in uh, like if we are using the bubble or yeah pra practically experience from this uh, like we started to develop it before uh, we've discovered the TLV options are already present in the message definition file so there is a I would say a lot of crap in our code that is trying to substitute what is right now uh, in a uh, best thing but we've been able to overcome this uh, um, comparing to EIGRP, the work was really similar. So once we were able to implement EIGRP, it was basically a very similar protocol. So we've used a lot of know-how that we've learned during uh, developing EIGRP. What we are usually, let's say, struggling is the validation process, you know, like comparing the simulation and the real network. Because in the real network, there's, it is hard to align certain events. Why? Because in simulator, you don't have any overhead, you don't have any interrupts what the CPU of the router is doing. So usually I would say our validation could be even better. So I, then this was the reason why I was interested in this kind of the packet drill, uh, packet drill thing and about the, uh, let's say, exporting what is happening in the simulator in the Wireshark PCAP file because it will be more easier for us to align events and to see whether there is some bug or not. And yeah. That, that would be probably my practical input from developing this thing. Any more questions? And I think we go on to the coffee break unless there are any practical announcements. Only maybe